Oh, what is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And in this video, we're going to dive into some of the rumors that came out today around the league. We'll also, of course, dive into John Mara and what he had to say about his quarterback and his head coach. Those were the most telling quotes that came out today from Mara. Mara, of course, does not frequently speak to the media regarding the team. I think the last time he did it was uh, around the playoffs last year, if I'm not mistaken. He doesn't do it that often, bottom line. He came out today. He talked at the owners' meetings about what he potentially expect the New York Giants to do. And when he talks, I take it with a little bit more, uh, I guess, credibility than when Joe Shane talks. So you can convince yourself when the general manager talks, this is GM speak. When the owner talks, I think it you take it a bit more seriously as a fan in terms of what you could see the organization doing. Is it possible it's all still smoke and mirrors? Sure. But right now, if you ask me, I think the Giants very much are in play to potentially take a quarterback. Question is, are they going to be able to get to the spot where they feel comfortable uh, selecting a guy that they may really like? Of course, at this point, I think most people are of the mindset that the four quarterbacks are going to go in the first five picks. And it might be four in the first four picks after what you heard today. And before we get into all the rumors, that's great news for the Giants. That's great news if you're a Giants fan, because the way I look at the at this situation right now is this. Option one, we get a quarterback. And then you say to yourself, OK, that's Joe Shane's guy. They believe in that guy. They're going all in for that guy. It's the most important position. They're building something. Option two, they don't believe enough in one of these quarterbacks to trade up to one of these spots. And they get a an elite player if four quarterbacks go in the first four picks. Suddenly, Marvin Harrison Jr. looks like a strong possibility. I'm still definitely leaning we're going to go wide receiver, but I'm certainly not ruling out the possibility of taking one of these quarterbacks, especially if a guy like Drake May drops to the four spot. Because I've thought all along that he just makes the most sense in terms of a fit for what Brian Dable would be looking for. If there is any quarterback in this draft class that resembles Josh Allen in terms of his play style, it's him. He's big, he's mobile, he's got a huge arm, he runs people over. I could see the comparisons when people bring him up to Josh Allen or Justin Herbert just in terms of physical skill set. Doesn't mean he'll ever reach that. You know, people would have said great things about several quarterback prospects that didn't reach their ceiling, but the ceiling is certainly high with Drake May, and he just seems to be the type of quarterback that the New York Giants may look for. And if some of these rumors are true, it's possible that he may fall into striking distance for this. And we're going to get a lot more rumors as this process goes along. But after what Mara had to say today, I yeah, I, I at least slightly more think it's even more possible that we may be going quarterback early in this year's draft. But let's dive into some of the rumors today. First, I wanted to pull this up from Twitter. This was a bit of an eye-opener for me. And again, who knows? Could be smoke. It's draft season. But I, listen, I've seen several quarterbacks in the history of the NFL draft, move up a ton uh, during the process. All you got to do is look at Anthony Richardson last year, a guy that some people had as a late first-round pick, uh, you know, early second-round pick, a month or two before the draft started, and he went top three in the draft. Uh, you got Baker Mayfield, 2018. A lot of people had him as a late first, early second-round pick early in the process. He became the first overall pick. Well, you're starting to see more and more smoke, and I didn't even pull up everything. The former Giant great Antonio Pierce, of course, the head coach, uh, with the he's with the Raiders. He <laughs> went on to talk about how he feels that how, I don't know how anybody could have J.J. McCarthy out of their top three quarterback prospects. So this is starting to gain more and more traction. As I've talked about in some of my previous videos, I've always been a fan of J.J. McCarthy. Not necessarily a fan of taking him in the top six. Um, wouldn't scream, as I've said several times, wouldn't be my preference. I do think it's too much of a gamble for the Giants, but if they were to do it, okay. But I can certainly see why he's gained more traction. Do I have him as a, as a guy that should go in the top two or three picks in a draft? No, but it's the quarterback position, and teams are desperate, and if they see something they like, it's certainly possible. And if there's some traction to this, I personally would be happy as a Giants fan if the commanders took McCarthy over Drake May. But let's dive right into it. Let's see what Pelissero had to say. It's been really interesting because everybody's always trying to figure out, especially at the top of the draft, what the other teams are doing. When I've had conversations here with executives for other teams who know Adam Peters well, know the situation well, the most popular answer for what they do at number two is J.J. McCarthy. It's been really interesting. 
So there, take that for what you will. Um, you know, it's still draft season. It still could be smoke, so on and so forth. But that's what Pelosero had to say from talking to GMs around the league. Who's the name they've heard most link to the number two overall pick? And it's been J.J. McCarthy. And if that's accurate, well, you got to think either Drake May or Jaden Daniels will be available with that fourth overall pick. Um, so even though I have said, I actually had McCarthy Daniels, a lot of people have called me crazy for that, probably still call me crazy for that. If that's accurate, one of those guys would be available with the fourth pick. Do I think that's going to happen? No, I'm still leaning Jaden Daniels will ultimately be the pick for Washington just because I think he fits the Cliff Kingsbury offense very well. And obviously, he's a very highly thought of prospect, so on and so forth. But I do think McCarthy going in the top five is legitimate. And that is nothing but good news for the New York Giants. The more quarterbacks that go early, the better. Whether the Giants get one or not, it gives you a better prospect than would have been there had only two or three quarterbacks gone as opposed to four within the first five picks. And that seems to be the way that it's trending. This also coming out from Ian Rappaport earlier in the day. He said, here at the AFC Coaches Breakfast, I asked Broncos head coach Sean Payton how realistic it was for him to uh, to be a potential trade-up team. He said, realistic. He said, they'll look at it and noted it's good to be Monty Osenfort right now. Of course, Monty Osenfort is the general manager for the Arizona Cardinals who sit in that powerful fourth overall selection. Hard to know how costly it will be eventually. And it had me thinking today, Minnesota Vikings, have, of course, have been the team that have, has been linked. Obviously, the reason being because they picked up the 23rd pick, but has been linked to potentially trade up. Had me thinking today, and I saw other people talk about it as well. They may be looking to move up to six and potentially trade up from there to move up to four to get to Arizona because Arizona may not want to fall that far back. If you're the Cardinals, you look at it like, well, there's some elite wide receiver prospects here. I'm potentially giving up the ability to take Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors. If I'm able to just drop the six, I could still get one of those elite wide receivers and get future draft capital. So if the Giants obviously were the team, it would make sense. But if the Giants didn't want to trade up, it could make sense for a team like Minnesota to get up to six before making the jump to four to get up to Arizona. How could a trade like that work out? Well, you think about it. You say from a Giants perspective, well, maybe they offer the 11th pick and a future first to the Giants to jump from 11 to six. And then that 23rd overall pick left over, maybe they offer six, 23 uh, to move up to number four. I could see something like that playing out on draft night. If I do not want a quarterback and Minnesota had to get up to that six spot or another team has to get up to the sixth spot because Arizona may not want to fall that far back knowing they could still get one of those elite prospects. There's a lot of interesting dynamics and scenarios leading up into the draft. And I think a lot of it's going to come down to just how bad do the New York Giants want one of these quarterbacks because the Giants, much like the Cardinals, if they actually do want to trade up, I do think sit in the driver's seat for that reason and that reason alone. They have as much, if not more, to offer than any other team and that pick is so much more, more valuable to a team like the Cardinals than trading back all the way to 11. So if the Giants don't want to make that move, they certainly may have some offers on the table for teams looking to move up to six. But the Giants could just look at it like, well, we could sit pretty here, hope a team trades up into the top four if they don't want a quarterback, and we're going to end up with either Harrison or Neighbors. So I think it's nothing but good things right now for the New York Giants in terms of the way that this draft seems to be evolving and shaping up. Um, and we'll see if ultimately they trade up for a quarterback or if they, if they stand pat and take one of these wide receiver prospects. Now we're going to dive into some of the quotes today that came out from Marafort. We'll first talk about the quotes regarding Brian Dable. This is coming out from a New York Post article. And then we'll dive into some of the quotes from Renan when he spoke specifically about the quarterback position. Certainly last season was a huge disappointment to me, especially coming off a playoff year, co-owner John Mara said Monday after the NFL's annual meeting. I still believe we're headed in the right direction. I have all the confidence in Joe and his staff and in Brian Dable and his staff. I think the communication is terrific. I think the process they go through is great. And I do think we're headed in the right direction. Obviously, until we start winning games, not everyone's going to buy into that. But I happen to believe it. We'll see how much he believes it at the end. Of the we'll see how this team does this year. But good to hear the owners say that. Never. What do you expect them to say? 
Then he went on to say, I think you always have to give them positive reinforcement from time to time. Talking about, I think, the head coach and the general manager. And I think I've done that, Mara said. Have I made them any guarantees? No, I haven't. But I think they both know that I believe in them. And it's hard to give guarantees in the NFL. It's a short shelf life position, whether it be a head coach or a general manager. It's a what have you done for me lately league. That's just the reality of the situation. Then he went on to say, there are times where I wish he would tone it down a little bit, talking about Dable here. But I'm also in the team meetings, and I see how he acts around people and in the coach's office, Mara said. He always maintains his cool. Does he get excitable during the game? Sometimes, yeah, so do I. I don't think that's a major issue. Then, this coming out from Jordan Renan of ESPN, if they fall in love with a quarterback and believe that it's worth the number six or even moving up, I certainly would support that. Mara said Monday via ESPN. Continued to say, I know they're locked in at the quarterback. You've seen that, Mara said. They've gone to some of the pro days. We've had some of these guys in. I don't think they're even close to making a final decision as to which way they're going to go on that. Those discussions will happen over the next few days. Then he continued. I still have a lot of confidence in Daniel, Mara told NFL Network insider Mike Garofolo in an interview on Monday. I think Dan with Daniel, we saw in 2022 is the real deal. Last year, he was hurt. A lot of the offensive line were hurt, and things just did not go our way. But I've got all the confidence in the world, and hopefully, he'll be ready to go by training camp. And yes, we'll expect him to be the starter in 2024. Mara said for ESPN.com, he wouldn't view taking a quarterback sixth overall or higher as an indictment on Jones. Rather, he'd see it as a good old-fashioned competition. No, I don't think so, Mara said. Why not let them both compete? Let them both compete and let the better man win. Whatever Mara wants to say, bottom line is this. If the Gi Giants choose the sixth overall pick on one of these quarterbacks or trade up to get one of them, Jones will be the starter to start the year more than likely because he's the veteran, because you'll probably want the rookie to sit and learn for a few weeks. But there's no competition. You don't invest that much draft capital in taking a quarterback that high in the draft when you owe that much money to Daniel Jones. He could say what he wants, being that it's PC and so on and so forth, and he may not want to tarnish Daniel Jones's value or whatever value there, there is currently left for him uh, coming off the year that he did last year due to his poor play and the injury. But the, the, the truth of the matter is if you have that much money to commit it to Daniel Jones and you're still to draft the quarterback, it's pretty obvious you're on by the end of next year. A lot will be said by the Giants on draft night. The question is, will they take a quarterback? I'm still leaning as I said earlier in the video, I think the Giants will lean more towards the wide receiver simply because I think it's the best to be PA with our pick. I really do. But if they trade up, well, you got to support them and hope that they get the quarterback pick right. I'd be a lot more excited if it were for a guy like Drake May. Because when I watch Drake May, I see a potential superstar. And if he is somehow able to trickle down to the fourth or fifth pick, I would be excited if the New York Giants were able to make that move. Would I be as excited for a guy like McCarthy, who I actually like? No, I would not. I would much sooner see, rather see the New York Giants stay at six, have Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr. land in their lap, and have that elite wide receiver prospect for years to come. But we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. We're just fans at the end of the day. We don't have the intel that these general managers do, and it seems to be more and more growth towards the theory of J.J. McCarthy should be a top-five pick in this year's draft. And listen, it's groupthink, right? If you would have asked all these fans on Twitter a month ago, how the, I was there, I saw it, uh, what they thought about J.J. McCarthy, people would have said he's a second-round pick. Now everybody's starting to say he's going in the top five. They, they, you know, people go with the trends. I've always liked the kid. I thought he was underrated. Now I think he's being a bit overhyped. But listen, if that plays to the New York Giants' advantage and allows them to get a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, or potentially a Drake May to fall into their lap, I would be all about it and smiles ears to ear on draft night. Um, May's got a lot to work on, but the tools are undeniable. And when you're drafting that high and you have a quarterback guy like a Brian Dable that you believe in, you take that swing. We'll have to wait and see how it all plays out, but I do think a quarterback is strongly still in play for the Giants, albeit I'm still leaning wide receiver. We'll have to wait and see how it plays out. We're a month away today. April 25th is the first day of the draft, and I can't wait to see who Joe Shane picks in his third draft as the general manager for the New York Giants. Have a mock draft up probably mm, tomorrow or the day after. I'll probably do a mock draft where the Giants trade down. I'll do another one. I'll do 
certainly some things to look forward to on the channel, but just want to get a video up today. Wanted to talk about what Mara had to say. Wanted to talk about the rumors around the league. As always, if you like what you watch, please subscribe. Drop a comment. Maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.